is Newsbreak 26 in Southwest New Brunswick. I'm Vicki Hogarth. Here's what's happening in our part of the world. St. Andrews and St. Stephen have received approval from Public Health for their plans to host an Atlantic Bubble Kids Hockey Tournament from November 13th to 15th. Approximately 150 kids from across New Brunswick and two teams from Nova Scotia will compete in the second annual Veterans Cup held at both the W.C. O'Neill Arena and the Garceland Civic Centre. And we actually had an on-site inspection last week that, that went through with flying colours. So we're very confident that we've put everything in place that's necessary to comply with the provincial requirements. Mayor Nash believes it will provide a welcome economic boost to local businesses, but does not expect St. Andrews to be any busier during the tournament than it was during the height of the summer tourism season. I don't think it's going to be any different than it was for most of the summer when we had all kinds of staycationers from all over New Brunswick coming to St. Andrews and enjoying themselves, enhancing our economy, kick-starting our small businesses, and so far, watch my hands, I don't know of any cases that arose as a result of what we did in the summertime. This is going to be no more problematic in my opinion. Bayside residents are happy that seafood exporter Little Bay Lobster will not be allowed to build a distribution centre near their homes on the St. Croix waterfront. The American company had hoped to build on the grounds of an existing gravel pit and had proposed having the land rezoned from rural to light industrial to execute plans. Gary McDougall spearheaded the concerned citizens group Bayside Residents for responsible development to fight the proposed rezoning plans. As, as neighbours started finding out about it, we were quite surprised that like people two doors over didn't even hear anything about this. So we formed a committee of about 15 concerned citizens and uh, pooled a little money and, and put out a flyer to make the rest of the uh, community uh, aware of what was being proposed. St. Croix MLA Kathy Bacchus encouraged residents to send their concerns to Environment and Local Government Minister Danielle Allen. Minister Allen received over 100 letters from concerned citizens and ultimately denied the rezoning request. And it shows that uh, Minister Allen was listening to them. Also the uh, proposed rezoning was not within the current land use for that property and it would have interfered with the enjoyment uh, of their property for the residents. Part of it was we felt the system seemed to be catering more to a foreign company than to the people who live and grew up here and and uh, but in the end we presented our case to Bacchus and Alain and they uh, listened to our concerns and, and uh, seemed to find merit in them and so we're very happy that democracy is still alive in Charlotte County. So. As COVID-19 cases rise across the border in Washington County, Maine, public health has released guidelines for Charlotte County residents, particularly for those who are essential workers who cross into the U.S. frequently for work. The guidelines include directly going to and from work without stopping to shop in the U.S. or visit friends. I spoke to New Brunswick Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jennifer Russell over the weekend about these guidelines, including how they apply to residents of Campobello. Islanders are permitted to enter the U.S. to obtain essential goods in American stores. However, Dr. Russell has specific guidelines that include how often Islanders should be shopping for essentials in the U.S. I think we're saying, I, I think we're suggesting twice a week and, and, and really for essential things only and really the close the closest place possible. Again, it's all about decreasing the risks and the consequences of, of those increasing risks can have a really negative impact on our ability to deal with outbreaks. Uh, the outbreak in Zone 5 took pretty much the entire province in terms of the public health teams to deal with. And that, you know, took about a month to get under control. My full interview with Dr. Russell can be found on CHCO's Facebook page. That's all the news I have for you. For more stories and online exclusives, follow us on Facebook at chco.tv. A news and public affairs production of CHCO-TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.